Big Seals. Yes, sir. It is a football Tuesday. Dude, how about that now? Every day is a football day now, right? Football Friday, football Thursday, football Saturday, Sunday, Monday, now Tuesday when you have Monday night. Doubleheader last night, too. I didn't give a shit about the second game. I only cared about Eagles and Bucks. Um, hey, by the way, want to get it going right out of the gate here. You get an opportunity at winning yourself some gift certificates with our great friends at Hooters. Tone is going to put out a code word. And you'll see it throughout the entire show. All you have to do is email us, show at gmail.com. You see that code word? You put all your info on there, you get an opportunity to be a winner like Patrick and Edgardo and our winners from this week and... We'll do this Tuesday through Friday. We so look forward to you doing this. And it's been a grand slam. You'll see that code word. And all you have to do is email. I also want to get the guest out of the way. Meryl Reese will join us at 3.30 Eastern time at the bottom of the hour. The legendary voice of the Philadelphia Eagles and the creator of the NFL on Fox. It's the 30th anniversary. And he also created Fox Sports. His name is David Hill. He's been on the program before. He's the man that hired John Madden and the NFL on Fox, the number one pregame show in all National Football League history. NFL on Fox, the creator of it, Rupert Murdoch himself. (laughs) I love that code word. By the way, Tush Push, one of my favorite plays. One of my favorite plays in NFL history. I, I just, it's like the sky hook. You can't stop it. It's amazing. So, tremendous. So, that's there for you. We got a packed show for you. Joe Theismann will join us this week, too. We'll talk a little commanders. Anything that I say here, always put this in proper context. 3-0. and Okay? 3-0. and And then everything else fills in after that, when I say that. And my perception of my takeaways from last night. I'm going to get to that here in a minute. I personally think the story so far in these three games has been Sean Desai. He has been an upgrade from Jonathan Gannon. I'll say this to you too. There is no question about it. Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis are the two best tandem defensive tackles in the National Football League. And Jordan Davis has made a leap in his career, almost the same amount of length that Jalen Hurts made from his first year to his second year. We'll see how the war of attrition plays out, though. But so far, these guys have been a dominant force. There's no getting around that. You know, even the Eagles, and and, and I'm going to make this point to you, too. I think the greatest thing ever happened to Jordan Davis is Jalen Carter. I think them drafting him and bringing him into Philadelphia has turned his career into something that the Eagles were kind of worried about where he wasn't a three-down lineman. They even thought that. Not just me, everyone in that organization did not look at him coming off of that year last year as a three-down D lineman. Not even the D line coach. So now, here's a player that's upped his game, and he's playing better. Great. Good for him. Josh Sweat continues to improve. I actually saw a Nolan Smith siding. There was some linebacker play. Reed Blankenship was good. Okay? They did a nice job. By the way, again, they did a great – that, to me, once again – This is not about the Jalen Hurts had really nothing to do with that win last night. This is about the side, the defense, and the run game. Okay. But for the quarterback not to have any kind of Dan Marino would go ballistic if the coaches had said that to him and done that to him. He would have gone ballistic. It's why he never won. 
He would have went ballistic. If Marino was having a four interception day, he'd still be throwing the passes instead of running the ball. That's who he is. But Hertz is not with ego. Hey, we're going to run the ball. Okay? Jordan Davis looks like a three-down motor all of a sudden. Absolutely. Dude, he's all of a sudden fantastic for him. Absolutely. I'll say this to you, and and, and again, I want before I start here, I want to ask you, you know what? I'm going to save that. I'm going to get to my takeaways. I'm going to get to my takeaways. Bucks defense had a great game. They were tough. They were tough at the point of attack. They run to the ball. They did a nice job. The pass defense also did a nice job. Um, the run defense, they were absolutely, for a third straight game, excellent in the run defense. Second straight game, the Eagles ran for over 200 yards, have become definitely um, a one-dimensional football team as of the first three games. You're one-dimensional. And by the way, your target radius and your target ratio proves that. Last night, one guy was targeted. One guy in your passing game was targeted. The rest of them, they were not. Hey, Jay Brown, every game you're seeing that now, it's a one target, which is one read. That's who this guy is. There's no team in the National Football League with any of those high-powered quarterbacks in it that runs the ball more than throws the ball. This is a passing league. I'll say it to you again. You'll never win a Super Bowl this way. You'll win a lot of games, and I'll prove a point to you on that. You will never win a Super Bowl with that offense in its current state. You'll never win one. Um, Carter and Davis are becoming a force. 40 rushing attempts. DeAndre Swift for a second straight game, which now even goes to the point, um, which is insane, how he didn't touch the ball in game one. Crazy, 130 yards. Um, AJ had nine catches for 131. One guy in the offensive passing game. As for Hertz, 23 of 37, 277, a 62 quarterback rating. Two interceptions. He's three touchdowns and three INTs on the year. Um, the offensive line absolutely did their job. Now, I'm going to make a point to you here, and I'm going to get to the numbers here of the game, too. How many people – can I tell you who you guys are? But maybe a little bit more winning. You're the Ravens. You're the Ravens. How about Evans putting up 150 on us? You're 20 and 1. You're not 20 and 1. Because you got to tell the full story. You're not 20 and 1 in his starting time as a quarterback for the Eagles. He's 26 and 11. He's won 70.27% of his games. Lamar Jackson is 73%, 47 of 64 games. He actually has a higher win percentage than Jalen Hurts does. And do you think that that offense and that team in Baltimore is going to be a Super Bowl champion? They're one-dimensional. He wins seven. He wins more than Hurts. He wins more than Hurts. Does anybody think Lamar Jackson's winning a Super Bowl? Yes or no? He's won seven, almost seventy-four percent of his games. For some reason, Eagle fans forgot the two and five start. You know, I, I, I don't forget that with Lamar Jackson. You got to tell the entire story. So if you don't think he's going to win a Super Bowl and he wins more. Now, I'll say this. Well, he's not in a better organization. He's not. They're pretty compatible. Ravens and Eagles are pretty compatible. It's a pretty good organization. 
Eric DaCosta has done a nice job. Okay? Do you, you're going to win a lot of regular season games, is my point, like the Ravens. That's not a team that's going to win a Super Bowl one-dimensional. Running the ball 40 times? What are you, the Miami Dolphins of the 70s? That's why Mahomes beat you. Let me ask you this one. Are you better this year than last year? Do you think you're a better football team this year than last year? I don't, not at all. I, you're not, I don't think you're better. Last year, he got out of the gate great. Jalen Hurts was spectacular in that second game of the season against Minnesota. He was spectacular. There was nothing spectacular going on about that offense right now. There's nothing spectacular. Dallas Goddard is a non-factor. Okay? Through three games? Okay, let's do this. Do you think you're as good as this team was through three games last year? Okay, I'll put it in a micro here like Tone just did. You think that team is better? Do you guys? I do not. Okay, let's look at the numbers. You're, you think your defense is better. First downs, Bucks held the 12. Eagles 27. Total plays, once again, domination because of the run game. Nothing to do with the pass game. They almost give up on the passing game. Hertz was missing passes all night long. All night long. Had a couple good throws. 78 to 44. Only reason you do that is because you're one-dimensional in your running attack. That's not a Super Bowl offense. Not close. Last year was. They didn't know what to think. Throwing the ball around a yard, running the ball, you were multifaceted. The quarterback was doing everything right. Dude, that interception between the wide receiver and they're not you're not even on the same page. 277 passing to 133. Did a really good job there. 41 yards rushing. To 201, you're a run team. That's it. You're not a passing team. You got one target, two turnovers, and time of possession again shows you why that football team. And again, I'll, I'll give them credit for one thing. They're making sure they're going to their strength right now. Their strength is not Jalen Hurts throwing the ball. Their strength is running the ball. What am I missing? Remember, I started the show off by saying you're 3-0. and You see, the Cowboys are 2-1 and because they can't overcome their deficiencies. And there's too many voices in the locker room. The Eagles at least know who they are. The, what I take away between the Cowboys and the Eagles in three weeks, Dallas gets frustrated quick. Philly doesn't. Okay, we're not really doing well. This is a plus. You know who you are. And if you see something not working, you're quick to adjust. Dallas can't. Dallas can't. And they get frustrated because of poor coaching. That's the complete difference. And you, and by the by the way, you're not better than San Francisco. That's We got our top 10 teams and our top 10 quarterback list today. You're not better than San Fran right now. Three games, we're into the season now. I don't hear anything about three games. We're into the season now. This is We're into the season. That shit's behind us now. We are now going into the final football game of the quarter pole. That's enough of that. And, okay, now you're going into your fourth week still trying to figure out your offense? Okay. I don't.
don't care about three games anymore. We're now going on to the fourth week. Okay? With the passing offense being up and down, it's important for the Eagles to dominate time of possession and dominate in the trances. Super Bowl offenses are developed over the course of a season. The Eagles are have all the pieces. Rust is no longer the excuse. They just got to find a rhythm. But they've never but here's the problem with that style of play. It's a one target offense. It's a one target offense. He's not going to have here. The one thing Mahomes does or Allen or any of these other guys. You know how they beat you? They beat you by spreading you out. How can a team with Juju Smith-Schuster and other dudes and Kelsey beat a team with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith on it and Dallas Goddard? Dallas Goddard is a non-factor. I'll I'll say this to you. The most explosive offensive football player right now is DeAndre Swift. Okay? The rest of them have not really... The defense has been the story so far. With all the missing pieces. Hey, and by the way, I looked it up this morning. What's the number? TJ Edwards is second in the NFL in tackles. And Kaiser White's 10th. I mean, those guys are good players too. Okay? First you rode Dallas, now the Niners. Okay? Because the Niners are playing better ball. Let me ask you this. Have you played an opponent better than the Steelers? Have you played an opponent better than the Steelers? New England? We'll see this week. Be a good test. Be a good test because they have the Cowboys. Personally, they're going to take a page out of what Jonathan Gannon did. And I think they're going to run the ball right at them. Okay? Steelers are 2-1 and one also. Personally, I think the Steelers are okay. I don't think they're great. That's not a Super Bowl AFC championship contending team. I don't think that at all. So again, according to you, the Bucs were top five defense. And remember, I prefaced it by saying yesterday at the top of what I said, that you guys were a different animal. They took on the Vikings and they took on the Bears. The Eagles would be a different roster. You're not listening. You're making a narrative up. I told you this was a different group than what they had faced. It'll be a good test for them. And I still believe they are. Yes. Okay. Yes. Most of you don't listen. Listen, I'll say it one more time to you. That offense is not a Super Bowl offense. Currently. Are the Bucks better than the Steelers? I, I, I don't know. They could be com- they could be compatible because Baker Mayfield and Kenny Pickett, I don't know. Flip a coin. I, I don't I don't I mean I look at Mayfield more experienced, maybe better. Okay. I guess. I think I think it's kind of I, I do think TJ Watts and their defense is a little bit better. And the 49ers destroyed him. Okay, and you can talk all about, well, the score doesn't really indicate. That just shows your ineptness to get the ball in the end zone because you can't throw it. The Bucks' defense is better. In my, I mean, the Bucks' defense is better according to Tone. Um, probably. Probably, because again, that's a Super Bowl. Ch- I would probably go there. Okay, I would probably go there because the Bucs did win a Super Bowl with that group. Okay, probably. 
Okay, but the Bucs have no run game. Steelers have a, 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 a resemblance of a run game. Okay? They do. So I would say this to you. After, okay, here we are into the season now. The problem with Hurts, once again, is that he struggles reading defenses. It's evident. It, when you watch him play, you're never going to beat anyone for a Super Bowl with that guy playing quarterback. You're never going to win in Baltimore with Lamar winning that style. You're just not. Running the ball 40 times, you think is a remedy for Super Bowl champions? Show me a team in the last 30 years that has done that. Let me think. Brady, Brady's team that won that game 14-7, I don't know how many rushing yards they had. You're never going to win a Super Bowl with that style of play. Okay? If you don't get that thing balanced, you're never going to win. I don't care what you guys think. You are never in today's NFL going to win a Super Bowl with that style of play. It's just not happening. Okay? You got to have more balance. You got to have more balance. So if you have Lane Johnson go down, your season's over. Not your quarterback. Is that what you're saying? Think about what you're saying. If Lane Johnson or Kelsey goes down, you have no shot to win the Super Bowl. Not if your quarterback goes down. So the most valuable player on the team are the center and tackle compared to the quarterback. I see. Okay? Never win. Never win with that style. Baltimore will never win, and they win more than you. You're going to win a ton of regular season games. But when you get into the playoffs, it's like, can I tell you what this is a comparison to? This is a comparison to when you have a whole – this is a prime – I'll tell you exactly who the Eagles are. They're the Phillies. Going to put up a lot of offensive numbers, a lot of home runs, get into the postseason. What's going to be their undoing? Pitching. Phillies will never win a World Series with that team they have this year. You know why? It's been that way for two decades. Pitching. Minor league system, not developing arms. You know why the Braves are superior to the Phillies? They, they invest in arms. They don't go out and get Bryce Harper. They draft arms. Jalen played three of the best defensive minds. Congratulations. Welcome to the NFL. Congratulations. Mahomes plays those guys every week. He plays great people every week. I don't want to I mean, guys, never in a million years will that offense right now in its current state Win the NFC. Never happened. And you're not better than you were a year ago. You were actually playing better last year. Getting ready to get into the second part of the season. Or the second quarter poll of the year. Okay? Eagles still playing jabroni quarterbacks. And you know what? Uh, that, that, that's, that I don't hang my hat on. I don't, I don't, I don't go there with that. The Eagles don't sit there and go, we'll play them and we won't play. This ain't like a college head coach picking his schedule on what bums to play and what bums not to play. It's, it's a computer-generated thing, I think, in Park Avenue that picks your schedule. So if they they got a bunch of good quarterbacks coming up. Now, they caught a break with the Jets, okay? But again, catching a break, good. That's not the Eagles' problem that the quarterback went down in New York. New York. It's called the NFL. Oh, so I, that, injuries are not excuses. It's part of the evaluation of your season. Don't you understand that? Well, they lost this guy. Well, guess what? Did you not account for that, that someone could get hurt? Because if you're not, you don't understand the NFL. There's not a hundred guys on scholarship in Philly. Okay. It's not, it's, 
that's not one of the better um, – actually, if you think about it, the offenses in the NFC that are better, um, there's no doubt here. What, what makes Philly good on offense is the fact they are so dominant running the ball. I mean, again, it's a one-dimensional passing offense, and it's a one-dimensional offense right now. Look at the targets. Look at the targets for the first three games. One guy gets them. What's that mean? One read. There's not a distribution of throwing the ball around. Looks like the O aren't on the same page. Um, I would say this to you. Not on the same page. So what's Jalen? No, no, no. Here, let's let's back this up here. Patrick Mahomes last year said what? Hey, I'm still learning how to read. And this was after he signed that $48 million contract. Mahomes is still learning. Why wouldn't you think Hertz is still learning? Why, why are you in such a rush to name this guy an elite player when the top player in the sport is going, I'm still learning. I didn't know how to read a defense till I got to KC. We were able also to take teams by surprise. Hey, hey Tom, can you please put that super chat up? Um, you're not 20 and one. You're 26 and 11 under Hertz. Stop doing that. It's like taking eight pages of a book out and reading the ones you want to read the most. You're 26 and 11. Like the same way that Lamar Jackson is 47 and 17. That's who you are. Okay? Hertz is 26 and 11. Did he not quarterback that two and five team? Oh, okay. Well, let's just go from here. Yeah, and you had the biggest L on the entire docket. The one loss during the regular season is Washington, who's coming up this week. And again, Washington, Sam Howell, okay. We'll see. They got good coaching. They got good coaching. There's nobody in here in their right mind thinks that that offense is a Super Bowl offense. Nobody in their right mind. And if you do think that, I'm not going to debate you, really. Because you could talk to anybody. You're not going to win a game running the ball 40 times in a Super Bowl. You're not. All a team has to do on you with a great quarterback is do exactly. You, you don't have comeback capability. And you know what else? Don't have a team get a 14-point lead on you with Mahomes or Allen or any of them guys. It's going to take you 10 minutes just to get down the field. Don't you understand that those quarterbacks can throw their teams out of trouble and into a lead? Yours can't. That's why those teams and those high, high-tech quarterbacks beat you all the time. Look, again, look at, the, look, look at the good ones that beat you and then look at the ones that you beat. Those guys aren't going to throw their teams out of trouble. We're going to find out how good everything is when we get into the meat of the schedule. And you got Mahomes. Hey, and you guys can keep shitting on Dak all you want. Okay, beat him. Beat him. You think you're better. You haven't proven that. Not against Dallas. And you guys are looking at the Cardinal game. Okay, sure. Keep doing that. You have not proven any time in the last, what, since 19, that you can beat Prescott. You got a chance this year. You guys think you're so great? We'll find out. See, that's the beautiful thing again about it. It's so early in the season right now.